This is the Apple Vision Pro, Apple's newest and arguably the most unique device it's ever created. I've been using it for around 24 hours. Here are five important things that you need to know. Okay, first, let's talk about design and form factor of the Apple Vision Pro. As soon as you take this thing out of the box, it's presented in a way that showcases the Vision Pro like it's something that's part of a museum. It even comes with a very Apple instruction manual that, I'm not even joking, looks and feels like a high-end magazine. Inside the box, you have a backup light seal cushion. One comes pre-installed on the Vision Pro themselves, so this is an extra. You get a really soft and branded polishing cloth to wipe off any smudges or fingerprints on the glass. The Vision Pro also comes pre-installed with the solo knit band attached, but it also comes with a dual loop band that should provide for better comfort, especially for longer viewing sessions. There's also a 30 watt USB-C power brick in the box and a nice braided USB-C charging cable, and of course, the portable battery unit itself that connects and powers the Vision Pro. Now out the gate, I do have some concerns around the way this battery pack is designed. Number one, it's a wired connection. I would have much preferred something like a USB type C connection that's detachable. Over time, if the cable on this thing starts to fray and gets damaged, you're pretty much toast as the Vision Pro won't be able to power on without it. Also, the proprietary connector here that connects to the Vision Pro, you have to put it in in a very specific way and it actually locks in. And look, I get why Apple probably did this, but I was hoping for something more like a strong MagSafe connection, mainly because once everything thing is in, if someone accidentally gets in the way of this cable while you're moving around or something, it's very likely that something is going to break. Now, when it comes to the Vision Pro itself, as to be expected, it's a super well put together, high quality device, premium through and through. The seal that connects to the main unit connects magnetically, as well as the seal cushion itself, which is great, but you're going to want to make sure that you are careful not to pick up the Vision Pro in this area because it's heavy enough to where the magnetic connection could detach. And trust me, you're not going to want to drop this thing. Putting on the Vision Pro is easy to do. The solo knit band has this adjustable knob on the side that you use to tighten and loosen your fit as needed and it works really well. Now, two important things that you need to know about the fit. Number one, if you ordered online, you're going to want to make sure that you do a fit check at the Apple Store before you take the Vision Pro home. When you order online, you use your iPhone's Face ID sensors to determine which size is going to be the right for you. And Apple told me that there are over 26 different size variations. And when I went to go pick up mine, the initial size that I was matched to wasn't good. The Apple staff has an entire fit check process and they were able to get me fitted properly with a different seal. So make sure to do a fit check before before you take this bad boy home. Next thing that you need to know is about the weight of the Apple Vision Pro and how it impacts the comfort of having this essentially on your face for extended periods of time. And look, I'm just gonna come on and say it, yeah. It's heavy. And more than the actual weight, the challenge with the Vision Pro is the weight distribution. 98% of the weight is lopsided on the front of the device, so it can start to cause some discomfort around the seal and your neck after extended periods of time. Now, I didn't get a chance to use the dual loop band yet, but this should help distribute the weight of the Vision Pro more evenly around your head, making for a more comfortable user experience. Now, at this point, I wouldn't say the weight is enough to make it a deal breaker, but it is something that I'm gonna carefully monitor over time the more and more I use the Vision Pro. And real quick, if you're finding this video helpful, can you do me a favor and press the thumbs up button? It really does help me out. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please consider doing so. Okay, next, I wanna talk about what to me has been the most mind-blowing part about the Vision Pro, and it might sound a bit odd, but the eye tracking and gesture control of Vision OS is pretty incredible. When you first boot up the Vision Pro, you walk through a very immersive setup process, part of which is an exercise in which you're asked to look at particular dots that come up on the display and pinch when you see them. It takes less than a minute to get through the whole setup, and I was a bit nervous that such a short process would lend itself to an easy UI navigation experience, but man, I was off zooming around Vision OS comfortably almost immediately. I don't know how many sensors Apple put inside the lenses, but the eye tracking is so accurate, it's almost scary. Even when I'm looking at a web page that has a ton of links jammed next to each other, the Vision Pro is able to laser pinpoint exactly what I want to select with me just very naturally looking at it and pinching my fingers. And doing things like opening and closing apps, moving windows around or resizing them, even scrolling through the UI is super easy to do. It's crazy how quickly navigating this virtual space is far easier than I thought it was going to be. And I think this is one of the most important components Apple had to get right in order for the Apple Vision Pro to have any chances at potential mass adoption if navigating around Vision OS is even slightly cumbersome. I think you're dead on arrival. 
But man, this eye tracking and gesture control works so well. I really feel it's gonna be the new standard for any VR operating system moving forward. It's an entirely new way of using your body to control technology and it's a triumph for Apple, no doubt about it. So with that last point in place, let's talk about some of the core capabilities of the Vision Pro. Now, disclaimer, I've only had it for around 24 hours, so there's still a lot of things I need to explore, but here are some things that you could actually do with this thing. So when the Vision Pro first boots up and you complete the setup process, it'll automatically go into pass-through mode, which makes it seem like you're seeing through the glasses into the environment around you, but you're actually not. The glass up front is opaque, but there are a ton of cameras everywhere outside the Vision Pro, and what it's essentially doing is using the cameras to capture the outside world around you and then instantly feeding that information back to the micro OLED panels your eyes are looking at to kind of give you the illusion of seeing through the glasses. The real impressive thing here is that there is near zero latency between the feed. When you put your hands up and move them around, the response time is so real world, it's kind of a mind job to understand that you're not actually seeing through the glasses. Now, the quickest way to be reminded of that is to go into one of the fully virtual spaces the Vision Pro has. They call it environments. You just turn the digital crown all the way over and it'll take you into a hyper-realistic, crazy immersive virtual environment that really makes it feel like you are somewhere else. Now, the Vision Pro does come with some pre-installed apps that Apple users are gonna be quite familiar with, such as Safari, Messages, the Notes app, etc. In many ways, Vision OS kind of feels like you have a MacBook and an iPad embedded on your face, but with the caveat being that you're not limited to any size of a screen. Having this virtual canvas allows you to have multiple apps open and spaced out however you want in either an augmented or virtual reality setting, and I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty amazing. Being able to have access to so many applications and not be limited to screen real estate is kind of a productivity wet dream, but the real reason why this is so great is because Apple's execution of the small details. Moving things around and resizing apps, again, is super easy to do, which is key. The Vision Pro also intuitively understands what you're focusing on, so it gently blurs out the apps in the background until you look at them again, quickly bringing them back into focus when you need them. It's a really well thought out way to navigate virtual space. Now, of course, you do have more Vision Pro dedicated applications that are more entertainment focused. The Apple TV app has some Vision Pro optimized videos that are really immersive. There's also this pre-installed dinosaur app that really showcases the 3D VR capabilities of the Vision Pro. It's kind of short, but it's really impressive. Again, really scratching at the surface here, given the limited time that I've had, but I'm eager to really dig in to see what else the Vision Pro could do. Now, as incredible and downright mind-blowing some components of the Vision Pro are, it does have some limitations that are not exactly hard to see. I think the first thing to bring up is the battery pack here. On a full charge, it can go around two hours, which isn't the longest amount of time, especially if you wanna watch a movie or a basketball game or something. Now, you can tether the battery pack into the included wall adapter and have essentially infinite power, but at the cost of being able to freely move around. I mean, you could also daisy chain the battery pack to another portable battery pack via the USB-C connection, but you're gonna need some serious pocket space to carry all that juice around with you. The Vision Pro also does not have native app support from some of the biggest players in the game like YouTube, Netflix, and Spotify, which is a major disappointment. Now, this may change over time, especially if the Vision Pro becomes quite popular, but there are some clear limits with the app selection at this current time. And that brings me to my last point, is the Apple Vision Pro worth it? And the short answer is no, absolutely not. The base model of the Vision Pro costs an insane $3,500 US. That is a crazy amount of money to spend on a piece of tech that is very clearly non-essential to the vast majority of people. There is not a single use case that I could think of so far that would make this a reasonable purchase for the average consumer. Now, it's bizarre to also say that the Apple Vision Pro is one of the most futuristic and innovative devices that I've ever experienced. It's seriously crazy, and I do feel as though there are elements here that much like the iPhone will change the landscape in terms of how people interact with technology. Now, it will need to get significantly cheaper in order for this to be accessible to the larger consumer market, but there's a whole other element here that even if the Vision Pro is cheaper to buy, are we as a society ready to live in a world where a lot of people have VR headsets on their faces. I personally don't think so, but let me know what you guys think. Do you think that the Apple Vision Pro is a successful device that will change the future? Or is it destined for the same fate as Google Glass and other wearable tech that seems to all end up dead? Curious to get your thoughts? Let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments down below. And in case you guys missed my reviews of the iPhone 15 and the 15 Pros, check them out here. They're gonna help you be as informed as possible.